Hello there. Uh, this video is on AP Physics C Mechanics 2024 FRQ um, 3 solution. Uh, let's read this one. A uniform rod of length and mass M is attached to the pivot uh, on a vertical pole as shown. So this is a vertical pole. This is the pivot. A vertical pole. This is the pivot. There's a negligible friction between the rod and the pivot. So there's no friction here. Horizontal string connects point Q on the rod to the pole. So that is a horizontal string which is connecting and holding the rod. The rod makes an angle of theta with the pole. A block of Mach 3M hangs from the rod at point P. The center of the mass of uh, the center of the mass of the rod is at C. On the following representation of the rod, draw and label the forces, not the components that are exerted on the rod. Each force must be represented by a distinct arrow that starts and points away from the point. Uh, at which the force is exerted. I think the easiest point is to show uh, mg at c. And the rod is of mass m, so it makes sense that we will point to downwards and indicate mg. Another easy point is q because the only, uh, so now uh, the rod does not have any force, right? Because we have shown that the gravity is exerting at the center of mass. Now the only force exerted on this, uh, on, on this will be the string or at this point will be the string which is going on the left to the left. Okay, let's call it maybe tension T1. At P there will be a tension here which is going downwards which is T2. Either you can say T2 or obviously the T2 is going to be same as uh, 3mg because this is also T2 and this is 3mg. So in a way, everything is in equilibrium. So either you can say this is T2, or to be more precise, you can say 3mg as well. It's evident that this arrow will be a little longer than this one because that's 3mg. So I'm gonna make a little longer uh, than this one. Uh, either this is T2 or 3mg, like I explained. The question is whether there is a force over here. If you're getting confused that since this is frictionless, there is no force, that is not correct because it doesn't make any sense, right? This rod is in equilibrium. The only forces acting on this rod at the moment are over on the left and downwards. So if it is supposed to be in equilibrium, there must be a force, a counter force acting towards the right and upward, which means that the force due to the pivot should act somewhere over here right it cannot be up because then there will not be any uh, right component it cannot be right otherwise there will not be up upward compo component so it makes sense that it will be a little oblique it will be a little oblique towards it um uh, so should be i mean why not here i mean it can be along the rod as well right why not it can be along the rod as well so i think i'm going to show it along the rod and I'm going to mark it as F, uh, you know, um, I don't know, F external, maybe, or let's call it F pivot, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, this is what we have as the FBD on the rod. The next one talks about in the figure one, point P is located 3, 8 L from the pivot and Q is located this from the pivot. Derive an equation for the tension FT on the, in the horizontal string in terms of this. Okay, so I, I think I'm going to borrow um, this figure um, from here because that's what they are interested in, uh, in the figure one, right? Uh, yeah, that's what we have. Okay, now the point P is located 3 over 8 L from the pivot. So this length is now given as 3 over 8 L, this entire thing. And Q is located uh, 6 over 8 L from the pivot. So this thing is over here. We need to find the tension. So, okay, okay, that makes sense. Okay, all right, excellent. What we are going to do is we are going to conserve, in fact, we are going to say that the net torque, since this is a question on static equilibrium, we know that the net torque, the net torque about the pivot, about the pivot, in fact, about any point is going to be zero. Why am I taking pivot is because I don't know the pivot force, right? So if I take this point as uh, the point about which the net torque is zero, uh, this will not come into picture because this force is anyway not exerting any torque 
on this point because uh, you know that is the reference right so its distance from this point is zero so in rf sine theta which is the formula for the torque the r is zero so this is not exerting any torque which works in our favor now uh, let's figure out that what will be the oh, by the way there was an angle theta as well right what was that yeah here uh, this is the angle theta let me switch the color over here this is the angle theta so it makes sense that this is also theta this is also theta and um, this will not be theta right we have to be careful about this because uh, this is going to be 90 minus theta if you are able to understand otherwise i can make definitely a triangle for you uh, this is how it's going to look like this is where t1 is pointing this is where the upward you know this thing is pointing up uh, upward this thing is pointing to the left so it goes here and it forms a triangle which i am showing over on the right so this is 90 and this is theta so obviously it makes sense that this is 90 minus theta why are these angles important because we are finding the torque so that's why it's important so now we are going to say that the net torque about the pivot is zero so the first torque will be due to this t2 slash 3mg so that torque is going to be um rf sine theta so r is 3 over 8 l as given in the question uh, rf f is 3 mg and sine theta is just sine theta plus likewise rf sine theta will be this c c is obviously the center of mass which is uh, at the center so it's l over 2 r f is mg and sine theta is once again sine theta uh, but be advised that uh, these two forces are exerting a torque in a clockwise sense so this is clockwise this is clockwise uh, i'm assuming clockwise to be positive so this t1 is exerting in counterclockwise sense so this torque i'm going to take as negative rf sine theta once again so r is 6 over 8 6 over 8 is 3 over 4 right uh, okay fine i will just take it as 6 over 8 because then you know common denominator thing 6 over 8 l uh forces t1 which is unknown which is actually we need to find right ft so i'm just going to replace that with ft and sine of theta now be careful sine of theta is theta is 90 minus theta and that's going to be equal to zero so all we need to do over here at this point is to just do some rearrangement use a little bit of trig over here so that should eventually give us the answer uh, so uh, let's try to do it i think um hmm, first thing i'm going to move this to the right side of the equation you know uh, i need more space uh, let me bring this entire thing over here and start working okay all right so this is over here and this thing goes over on the other side of the equation so this negative is gone and this is equal to uh, this thing i hope you understand what i did i just moved that on the other side uh well uh lots of things are together at least not lots of but at least some is l is different oh no yeah never mind l is gone uh that's the first thing to start with is m also gone no unfortunately not so let's do this 3 times 3 is 9 9 mg over 8 sine theta uh, mg over 2 sine theta uh, 6 over 8 ft sine of 90 minus theta is cos theta guys so uh, what is this thing uh, lcm is 8 or common denominator is 8 so this will be 9 mg sine theta plus 2 times 4 is 8 so 4 mg sine theta that is equal to 6 over 8 ft i don't know why i wrote f2 here this should be ft uh, cos theta uh, well that's the reason why they gave 6 over 8 and not 3 over 4 because 8 and 8 is gone uh, 9 plus 4 is 13 13 mg sine theta is equal to 6 ft cos theta uh, dividing both sides with 6 and cos theta uh, so I think that's going to look like uh, 13 over 6 definitely we have 13 divided by 6 mg sine theta over cos theta is equal to mg uh, sorry is equal to ft and what is sine over cos obviously that is uh, nothing but tan so I'm going to write I'm going to write my final answer over here that uh, ft is equal to 13 over 6 mg tan of theta I mean obviously you can leave it over here as well it's totally fine but uh, that's a very basic identity so i just thought to use it and make it a little bit more you know decorative
So this is how we do this question. I hope this makes sense. Um, so uh, let's move on to the next question. All right. Uh, now they are saying that the original string is replaced with a longer string. Okay. That connects point Q to a higher location, to a higher location on the vertical pole. Okay. The angle theta still remains the same. How does the new tension Ft new? compare with the original tension ft and justify your answer okay so if you're supposed to uh, if you were to just borrow the previous equation uh, the left side will still be the same everything will be same till this point the only change which we have is this 90 minus theta will no longer be applicable uh, why because uh, obviously this is no longer 90 degrees right this is no longer 90 degrees this is less than 90 so obviously this is less than 90 so this is more than uh, the previous angle which we were having right so that's for sure that this angle is a little more let's call this alpha so the previous entire equation can be borrowed just by replacing this 90 minus theta with alpha or in other words replacing this uh, entire thing with sine of alpha i hope it makes sense so just replace this with sine of alpha and that will be your new equation of the tangent so let me write that uh, over here so ft will be equal to 13 over 6 mg sine theta over sine alpha and what happened with this alpha it increased right we just talked about this because this became less than 90 so obviously this became more than what it was uh, intuitively also it makes sense because initially this was the uh, you know situation was this so the, the string was here so obviously if you are moving it uh, upwards this angle is obviously going to increase so if alpha is going to increase, obviously sine alpha will also increase because sine is an increasing function, right? Uh, between 0 to 90, the sine goes like this, if you remember a little bit of trig. Uh, so this value increases, the denominator increases, so the numerator, uh, this is ft nu by the way, the numerator automatically decreases. So we have justified the reasoning and we will say that ft nu is less than uh, ft old or just ft. That's how uh, we have this, we solve this question. Right, we have a last part over here as well. Uh, let's talk about this one. Uh, it says that there's a non-uniform rod. Okay, interesting. This rod is non-uniform now, is attached to the pivot, and there's a negligible friction between the non-uniform rod and the pivot. Uh, negligible friction, okay. The rod is a length of 1.2, and it's a linear mass density is given, uh, where A is this and B is this. So what is the mass of the rod? Pretty straightforward, uh, because we know that what is the linear mass density, guys? Linear mass density is mass per unit length, or dm over dx. So dm over dx is given as A plus Bx, uh, multiplying dx both the sides. So dm is equal to A plus Bx, uh, dx. And I'm just gonna integrate this from zero to total mass m and from zero to total length 1.2 so the integration is going to be ax plus bx square over 2 uh, the bounds are from 0 to 1.2 that is the value of m it's going to continue here so m is equal to a times 1.2 plus b over 2 times 1.2 whole square uh, minus zero of course so i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not putting zero because zero will just make everything zero so it doesn't make any sense so what is a uh, it's six so six times 1.2 what is b b is 10 10 over 2 times 1.2 square just gonna stop working here manually 12 6 is 72 so that's 7.2 i know that 10 over 2 is 5 5 times 1.2 square it's going to give us 14.4 obviously this is going to be in grams or kilograms i think kilogram right everything is in kilograms so that's going to be the mass of the rod which is 14.4 there is the rotational inertia of the rod about the pivot what is the rotational inertia what is the formula for the rotational inertia about the pivot about one end it is uh one twelfth of ml square but mind it we cannot do it why because the mass is not constant so we are gonna say that although the uh, the formula we know the formula but that's not applicable for because this is a non-uniform rod so we, we are just going to go at x distance and take an elemental strip dx and that dx we are going to um, calculate over here uh, let me take this in fact on the uh, next sheet so uh, i go on x and i take dx so um, 
uh, what is the formula for uh, rotation inertia it's mr square right so elemental mass times r square where r is x square and what is dm uh, we just uh, we just wrote in the previous question that dm over dx that is mass per unit length is uh, nothing but lambda lambda is nothing but a plus bx so just gonna sub that in over here that dm can be written as uh, a plus bx multiplied with dx so this will be a plus bx multiplied with uh, dx and x square i'm just writing dx at the end it makes more sense over there rotation inertia over is i uh, that's it this is more math now so it's ax square ax square plus bx cube dx the bounds are of course from 0 to 1.2 um, so the integral will be ax cube divided by 3 plus bx raised to 4 divided by 4 from 0 to 1.2 you know the value of a you know the value of b so i'm just gonna plug that into the calculator so i'm getting uh, 8.64 so i'm getting this as 8.64 and what is the unit of moment of inertia it's kilogram meter square so kilogram meter square that is the final answer for the moment of inertia or the rotational inertia of the rod about this pivot i hope this makes sense that was the last question offset one um any questions please post it on the comment section and i'll see you soon in the next video Bye bye